Ciao friends, in this episode we'll explore the vibrant city of Buenos Aires and discover why it's considered one of the best cities in South America. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please consider doing so before we dive in. Buenos Aires is an eclectic city where European charm intertwines with Latin American heritage. It's a true open-air museum of architectural styles, reflecting its diverse history and cultural influences. From the elegant neoclassical buildings of the city center to the colorful facades of the La Boca neighborhood, every corner offers a glimpse into its fascinating past. Its food, its culture and its people make this city a beautiful melting pot with its own perfect identity and allure. One look at her, you will fall in love with the giant metropolis, which is said to be the most beautiful city in South America. We are in uh, Palermo Soho. This is the main square and it's absolutely beautiful with all restaurants around it and on the side streets you can go and see different graffitis. There's a lot of art, a lot of energy, a lot of restaurants. It's absolutely beautiful. Palermo Soho, named after New York Soho, is part of the larger Palermo neighborhood in Buenos Aires. It emerged as a trendy area in the early 2000s, although it's one of Buenos Aires' oldest neighborhoods dating back to the late 16th century. Known for its vibrant art and fashion scene, cobblestone streets, boutique shops, chic cafes, and hip restaurants, it's a hub for young designers, artists, and entrepreneurs fostering a creative and bohemian atmosphere. It's also renowned for its colorful murals and street art, and it's not uncommon to see local celebrities enjoying the area's trendy spots. This is one of the trendy neighborhoods of Buenos Aires, okay? And probably as you see, you're gonna see rainbow flags everywhere, okay? Probably you don't know this, but Buenos Aires is one of the first city who give rights to the LGTV community, okay? So in this area, the people are very, very proud to be gay. We got our greatest players here, okay? You got Pasarela, who wins the World Cup in 1978. Lionel Messi, of course, who wins the World Cup in, 19, in 2022. And Diego Maradona, who rides the World Cup in 1986. And this is one of the trendy places for the uh, murals or the street art. You're gonna find this uh, kind of tiny streets that 30 years ago used to be the red light district. Boca neighborhood, one of the oldest neighborhoods in Buenos Aires and of course most of you who like football recognize the building behind me which is the stadium La Bombonera where the famous uh, Boca team plays. We're not lucky enough to go to a game today but we're starting uh, the tour of Boca here uh, in this iconic area and iconic building. It's so amazing to see it. I've seen it on TV so many times and uh, it's, it's really really beautiful. 
La Boca's identity is deeply rooted in its immigrant history, particularly the influx of Italian immigrants from Genoa in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Drawn by job opportunities, these immigrants settled in La Boca due to its proximity to the port. They built their homes, called conventigios, using scrap materials from shipyards, painting them with leftover ship paints, creating the neighborhood's distinctive colorful facades. By the mid-20th century, La Boca had declined, with many of its historic buildings in disrepair, but it underwent a revival thanks to local efforts and government initiatives. Artist Benito Quinquela Martin played a significant role, as his colorful depictions of the port highlighted La Boca's cultural value. In the 1950s, inspired by Quinquela Martin, Caminito Street was transformed into an open-air museum. This project restored the colorful facades and created a space for local artists and performers, becoming a major tourist attraction. This is Carlos Gardel, the most important tango singer. And then, probably you're gonna find the most famous Argentinian person in the whole world. Don't worry, it's not Maradona, it's not Messi. You got it, it's the Pope. And it's drinking a mate. This is the only tradition who originally belongs to the natives of this area that still remains in our traditions. Mate came from the Quechua language. The Quechua language is the original language of the Incas and many tribes from South America. So mate in Quechua language means gourd or pumpkin. It's made with those, okay? You're gonna see when the Argentinians we are drinking mate, basically we are drinking mate with our relatives, our friends, our couples, okay? Mate is about trust and friendship, so you're gonna see we are sharing the mate. The first mate is gonna be given to the most important person in the whole round. This could be the oldest person or the most important people for you. You should be offering the mate, but with the straw, looking to the person that you are offering the mate, okay? Because otherwise, if you give the mate like this, with the straw looking to other places, that is respectful. That means I don't care. If you are here, it's the same. Okay, now we are entering in the area of Caminito Street, okay? All this area, it's under protection by the city because they are historical buildings. In this area you could buy a building and then inside you could do anything as you want but you cannot touch the face of the building. This is a lively area okay they are just starting. In a couple hours it's gonna be a Boca Juniors match here so the area is gonna be crowded and packed okay so you're gonna see people dresses with the Boca Juniors colors as you see here. Okay, and this is the area that everybody came here to take the lunch. This is an spectacular area just to eat the choripan, the Argentinian national sandwich, with a couple of beers before to go to the games. Okay, right now we are in Caminito Corner. This is the most famous corner in the entire city. Uh, actually, this is one of the top 10 picturesque places in the whole world, okay? Okay, even today, if you look at wall over Caminito Street, you're gonna find the first section is used for the tourism. But the other section to your right, still there are tenements on working and still it's people living in there. Okay, this is Caminito Street. One of the most famous tangos from Buenos Aires was made and composed in honor of this street. Okay, over that corner you're gonna find the tango, the letter, right in the corner, uh, because this is one of the most touristic spots in Buenos Aires City. Disculpe, ¿cómo se llama? Laura Varela. Y trabajo para el Museo Quinquela. Ajá, es que eso lo siento. Y soy restauradora. Okay. Y bueno, el trabajo de este, este estaba pintado, este relieve estaba pintado de Perlotti. Perlotti trabajaba esculturas, eh, relieves así, en, en morteros blancos, sí. sin pintar, pero era amigo de Quinquela y claro. Quinquela pintaba todo. ¿Y qué programa es eso del gobierno? Eh, esto hace más o menos dos años, estaba formaba parte de espacios públicos y hace dos años eh, pasó a formar parte de la tutela del museo. Entonces el museo empezó a intervenir las obras. Eh, y ahora me tocó con este, que es sacarle la pintura que tenía sí. y buscar el color original. Muy interesante, muchas gracias. Gracias a ustedes. <risa> Y 
here in the city of Buenos Aires, there are several bars that are quite old and very beautiful. They belong to a list that is made by the government and they are called Bar Notables. Café Torton is one of them, uh, Los Galgos is another one, El Federal. Uh, Café Tortoni in this case, it's dated from 1858. Let's go see how it looks inside. We're just gonna order a quick coffee today. Actually, we were just curious to see how it looked, and it looks really nice. Café Tortoni, established in 1858, is a historic and iconic café in Buenos Aires, known for its Belle Époque architecture and cultural significance. It has hosted famous patrons like Jorge Luis Borges and Carlos Gardel, and offers traditional Argentine food and beverages. The café is a cultural hub featuring tango shows, poetry readings and art exhibitions. Located on Avenida de Mayo, it is a popular tourist attraction, preserving much of its original charm and decor. Just sitting, uh, <laughs> from just sitting for a coffee, it became like a... This uh, monument is in the crossroads of Corrientes Avenue. We are in the neighborhood of Puerto Madero and specifically on this beautiful stretch by the ecological reserve called Costanera. Um, this area is uh, scattered with uh, a lot of street vendors and the, all of them look extremely cute but with little umbrellas and stuff, very colorful. It's an area that used to be an old port but now it's been gentrified and it's one of the most expensive areas to live. There's the beautiful women's bridge here that we came to see. It was done after a, a tango pose that the woman does. I think the best time to come and visit it is at night when the lights are, are out. But this area is one of the many, many neighborhoods that are so worth visiting. I don't think if you are here a month you will have enough time to see everything in this beautiful city but every corner we look we are mesmerized and we are loving every moment of seeing it and this area is also the financial center there are many restaurants many famous restaurants shopping it's, it's just beautiful today of course you know we're gonna get the Choripan uh, national uh, pride here in Argentina there are different combos we're gonna go with the first one because a lot of food is ahead of us today and this one comes with chori, of course, fries and something to drink for just 4,000 pesos. Hola. Hola. <laughs> ¿Puedo ver dos uh, combo número uno, por favor? Hola, ¿cómo estás? So the chori pan is done and I put a little bit of chimichurri on one side and then I put some salsa criolla. I think that's it for me. I cannot wait to eat this though. Yeah. Try my first choripan since I got here. I don't know why I waited this long. Oh my god. It's so good. It's so simple. It's like a sausage with bread and yeah. condiment, but it's just the sausage. It's absolutely delicious. <laughs> the sausage is humongous, first of all. And it's been open flat, and it's you know grilled um, on a, on face down, and it's full of fat. And with the bread, it just absorbs the fat, and you have all of these condiments that add so much flavor. The concept is like a hot dog, but it's nothing like a hot dog. It's absolutely delicious, and it's humongous. So I don't know if we're gonna be able to finish it, but I'm tempted. Well, I'm exaggerating. Un poquito de criolla. Ahora se come. Let's eat. Mmm. Mm. I think I eat the paper. <laughs> I like also the paper.
We are by the Oprah House and behind me the Supreme Court and I think somewhere around here there's this amazing building that we saw and we stopped um, which is an old building uh, in contrast with a newer building which is amazing. We heard a lot about the city, how beautiful it is, how beautiful the architecture is and now to stand here and to see it even in this rainy day, it's really amazing. Plaza de Mayo, the historic heart of the city, is home to the iconic Casa Rosada, the presidential palace renowned for its distinctive pink hue. Close by, you'll find the Metropolitan Cathedral, notable for its grand neoclassical facade and stunning interior. Situated opposite Plaza de Mayo, the Metropolitan Cathedral serves as the main site of the Catholic Church in Argentina. It is also where Pope Francis, then Archbishop Jorge Bergoglio, used to celebrate Mass before his 2013 appointment to the Vatican. The cathedral holds significant religious and historical importance for Argentina. It has been the site of numerous important events, including the inaugural Mass for the first Argentine president, General Bernardino Rivadavia, in 1826, and the funeral of General José de San Martín, a key figure in the country's independence movement. The cathedral has a crypt that houses the remains of several notable Argentinians, including national hero General San Martín. Tonight we came to La Cabrera for dinner. We have been here before and we love the food so much that we decided that we want to share it with you. And for appetizer, we ordered, of course, um, the empanada. Uh, of meat and this one is fried empanada and let me show you the inside if you had empanada in the US you know that you don't get this much meat inside and then we have two different kind of sauces I'm gonna try this with the salsa criolla which is a little bit spicy with tomato mm -hmm. 
And then, it's the reason we came back. It's really, really, absolutely good. And then, of course, there's a sashimi churri as well. You can put that. It's more herbaceous, this salsa. And it's full of meat. I think there is egg in there. It's fried, but the, the shell itself is not as thick, so it's all about the filling, and it's absolutely delicious. Puré de papa, puré de manzana con semillas de chía, humita con crema y parmesano, estos son mayotas al horno caramelizados y tomate chico. Perfecto, gracias. Oh, soy Clivy, soy Coli. Oh, violeza, no me, no me tiene de moli, laudido uci del solo natal, del Giordano le rivi saluta, del Giordano le rivi... Ah, a te, a te. Uh, our friend from Brazil. Yes, amigo de Brazil. <laughs> There the morcilla, which is the blood sausage, and of course we had to try the chorizo, which is a basically a national staple. All right. Morcilla, I think, is the blackest of sausages. Oh wow, this blood sausage is, looks really, really rich. Wow. <laughs> oh, no. The morcilla is delicious. I swear, this blood sausage is so creamy that it doesn't even feel like meat. It's like chocolate. It's so good. Next, let's try the chorizo. Oh, it smells so good. Mm. Wow, it's a burst of spices on your mouth. It's delicious. Mm, filet mignon, plomo. In Portuguese, filet mignon, in English, tenderloin. Tenderloin. They have poultry for candy, the farofa, we're from Brazil, mayonnaise, chimichurri, vinagreta. Okay? Gracias. Mi nombre es Miguel. Miguel. Por favor. Permiso. I think that when you speak speaks this language, you don't need any other language. So in Argentina, they cook the, the meat a little bit too much if you like medium rare, but the meat is absolutely insane. This is the filet mignon that we got, and it comes also with a lot of um, condiments. Yeah, let's try this. Mm. Oh my, it's amazing. It's really amazing, amo. Para que tienen pera con queso, para que tienen puré de damasco. Esto sería eh, chipá. Esto es eh, mayonesa con huevo, pesto de tomate, champiñones, humus de garbanzo. Esto es puré de arvejas y creme brûlée de choclo. Todo cortesía. ¿Quieren probar todo? ¿Le parece? Last time we came here, we ate at least four each. I think we have to like run because we were so ashamed that we finished the whole lollipop. I don't think you're supposed to finish it. We are really ashamed of ourselves when we had to run after getting four each. But you know. It's really good though. Honestly, it's really good. No? It's amazing. The tango in the beginning was a music who was bringing by the immigration. Italians, Spanish, French, Germans, Polish, Russians, all of them. So in the beginning the tango was like a kind of sadness and melancholic music. But then what happened? The tango, this music was used in the men's clubs by the professional social workers. So the tango changed. The tango became more sensual, more sexy. Actually today, if you see a couple dancing the tango, you're gonna see a couple things. First, the lady who is dancing, the dancer, she's using a sexy and a fancy dress. Because it was the kind of dress who was used by the prostitutes, okay? And second, in the tango, it's everything about the expression, it's everything about the sensuality, 
okay? I don't know if you see it, how they use the legs, okay? What is the purpose? They are trying to seduce the men, engage, and then charge for the services. Tango isn't just a dance in Buenos Aires, it's a cultural institution deeply ingrained in the city's identity. It emerged during the late 19th century, predominantly in the working-class neighborhoods and port areas. It originated from a fusion of African, European and indigenous influences, melding African rhythms with European immigrant music, notably Italian. Initially, tango was confined to brothels and establishments deemed low-class, leading to its disapproval by the upper echelons of society. However, it gradually gained traction and became more acceptable, spreading to dance halls and cafes throughout Buenos Aires. We are at Mercado San Telmo, a market that has been around in Buenos Aires since 1897. Inside there's a lot of food vendors and a lot of uh, vintage shops. Mercado San Telmo, located in the historic San Telmo neighborhood, is a bustling market established in 1897. This architectural gem, designed by Juan Antonio Buschiazzo, features a stunning mix of Italianate and Beaux-Arts styles, with its iron framework and glass ceilings. Besides food, the market is renowned for its antique stalls, a true treasure trove for collectors. The market is home to numerous eateries serving traditional Argentine dishes such as empanadas and choripan, as well as international cuisine. With over 120 years of history, Mercado San Telmo continues to be a dynamic and integral part of Buenos Aires, offering a blend of the traditional and the contemporary. The outdoor market, often referred to as the San Telmo Feria, is a lively and extensive market that takes place every Sunday. It spreads along the fenced streets and surrounding areas, turning the neighborhood into a bustling hub of activity.
place that exemplifies the diversity of Buenos Aires' population is Recoleta Cemetery, a hauntingly beautiful necropolis where Argentina's elite rests in ornate mausoleums. Located in the upscale Recoleta neighborhood, this sprawling necropolis is the final resting place of many of Argentina's most prominent figures, including politicians, military heroes, artists and intellectuals. It was established in 1822, making it one of the oldest cemeteries in Argentina. The French engineer Prospero Catelin was responsible for designing the layout of the cemetery, which opened in 1822. He drew inspiration from European cemeteries of the time, particularly the Père Lachaise Cemetery in Paris. One of the most famous residents of Recoleta Cemetery is Eva Perón, the iconic First Lady of Argentina, whose tomb attracts thousands of visitors each year. Her mausoleum, adorned with floral tributes and heartfelt messages from admirers, serves as a focal point of pilgrimage and remembrance. Here it's one of the last speeches she gives alive. Okay. So she's not buried alone, as I told you, she's buried with two sisters and his older brother. She finished saying, Volveré y seré millones, which means I'll be back and I'll be millions. The meaning of this is nobody gonna forget me. And she got right. Which is true. Yeah. yeah. Big More girl. love. <laughs> <laughs> My love. As you see, she's yeah. uh, I, I am she fun. Yeah. I am fun. This is the reason. This is the reason why she she's still today is uh, most, the most loved woman here. She fights for the working classes' right. She fights for the uh, poor people' right. But most important, she fights for the woman's rights. <laughs> Thanks to Evita, the woman can go to this country. Thanks to Evita, the woman has the same civil and worker rights that men. Change the, the life of the life. Mucho... Vengo, vengo, siempre. ¿Siempre? Siempre. Si sí. vengo un día sí, un día no. ¿Qué le, qué le, hace, <laughs> ¿qué le hace pensar cuando piensa me, en el vida? Me hace, vos que entendés castellano, este, no, me, me, me conecto con Dios, con la Virgen y ella, y me hace muy bien. Siento mucha paz. Está aquí una paz, está con él. Claro. Y Dios se la llevó porque lo que ella sufrió no se lo merecía. Demasiado temprano. Era, tenía la edad de Cristo. Y no se lo merecía. ¿Entendés? Se lo llevó porque no era de este mundo. Pero él mismo dijo, Lita no era de este mundo, era de otra dimensión. This girl died quite young, between 18 and 19 years old, okay? The night she died, the history says she found the mother, the stepmother, actually got an affair with his fiance. So she felt dead. Because the stepmother doesn't want to make any show around the dead, she buried quick, her quickly. But the next day, the family came here to check if everything was okay. When they checked, they found the Rufina's coffin move. Yes, what happened? She was buried alive. She suffers catalepsy, catatonic sickness. You look dead, but you are not dead. Okay. The problem is when you got catatonic, you feel everything. You know, you understand everything which has happened. But you can do nothing. She was buried alive, so <laughs> yes. When they opened the coffin inside, Rufina was turned around, his face all scratching, and the coffin all scratching from inside. That's why the family sends to make this monument like she's trying to open the gate. Two things. First one, Liliana is using a wedding dress. And the second, she's with a pet, his lovely pet Sabu. This is the history. When Liliana get married, she loved to ski. So they went to Innsbruck in Austria. In the honeymoon, both her and his husband dies for an avalanche oh. first down into the hotel so both dies in the honeymoon that's why she's using the, west, the wedding dress but here in Buenos Aires 15,000 kilometers away crossing the Atlantic Ocean the same day that Liliana was dying in Europe his lovely pet Sabu died here in Buenos Aires the same day oh. yes the same day and the same moment so for the local people this sculpture represents the connection between Buenos Aires and Europe Okay, so that's why you're gonna see the nose of Sabu, it's very, very touched because the local people came here and they touch the nose of Sabu and make a wish, and they say it's gonna be considered. Of 
course, a tour of Buenos Aires wouldn't be complete without trying the famed Argentinian pizza. We chose El Cuartito, a local favorite and very characteristic and historic pizzeria to try their celebrated pizza. Here you can try pizza by the slice, and believe me, one slice is plenty. Uh, we ordered a fugaceta con faina. Fugaceta is this uh, amazing, very thick pizza with ton of uh, mozzarella uh, overflowing everywhere and onion. They told us to order the fugaceta with the moscato wine, sweet wine, because it goes together apparently, so let's try it. <laughs> it's kind of it's kinda hard to know where the bread is and I mean the pizza crust is and where the cheese starts so, much so you just have to go for it <laughs> this is a bite that I'm gonna try wow good mm. is it burning no okay. it's really good I wouldn't compare it with the pizza that we're used to having. There's more cheese than pizza, but it's really good with the onion taste, the, the sweetness of the cheese, and even the, the crust is really spongy, like a, like a Chicago deep dish pizza. Yeah. But it, it, it's really good. I don't think you can have more than one slice. Now we have to also try it with the fajina, which is um, a chickpea flatbread. It's uh, also Italian. I don't know if you can see it in my bite. I got all three of them together. I think this is going to be my last bite. You know, it goes really well with the moscato. The sweet yeah. wine, it's mm -hmm. just like mm -hmm. super nice. Really. Well, so good. I don't know why it works, but it works. I know, mm -hmm. like, fantastic. Uh, I think that with one slice, for two will be full until tonight and the place is so busy that we're standing by our counter and eating we saw a lot of people doing that yeah the place is packed it's a it's a really an energy i love it mm -hmm. you see all kind of people old young people that look like they came from work people know each other they're very relaxed having fun and yeah. this place has been like this for 90 years which uh, is amazing people in business suits people that maybe just got out of the gym everybody everybody and countless countless uh, jerseys of um, Argentina players yes. Maradona paintings uh, uh, you know gaucho paintings no, it's like uh, it's, it's really beautiful nice. If you are into this kind of like messy, very authentic kind of place, I think you will love it. And I'm so happy that we got to try the pizza in Argentina. They're known for this and this is one of the best places to get it. So it was worth it. Hola. Hola. He, she gonna be your assistant. This Hello. is Miriam. Hello. Hello. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Por favor. Se llama Limpia, es una jaca. Una jaca, una jaca mórbida. Gracias, chicos. Gracias por su blazer. Un blazer. Sí. Tengo un blazer maravilloso. Por si colores marrones. Puede ser colores marrones. Sí. Así el dulce de leche. Okay. Prueba pues. Eso. Ahora tráeme el otro blazer, el clásico. Sí. Esto va así. Uh, es bien mórbida. Mórbida. Es el añelo. Sí. Añelo, ok. Añelo. Entonces el añelo tiene un caimiento maravilloso. <risa> ah, ¿Y bello. ¿Dónde estás eh, viviendo? ¿En qué parte de Estados Unidos? Ah, uh, Washington. Ah, oh, bueno, hace frío Washington. <risa> qué bello, Barla. Sí. sí. Bellísima. Bellísima. Eh, Esto va así. Ahí. Y ahora te voy a traer para Washington algo que le tienes que sacar una foto porque te va a quedar maravilloso. <risa> eh, único. Es único. Sí. Con un jean, con un pantalón negro. We are in Antilope and we're trying to find a leather jacket and we have our helper here. Miriam is my name. Hello. Hello. And you can come here and you can find everything that you want. And it's a good price because it's not in a very touristy area. Then you have to know to come here, so. Aquí ofrecemos, nuestra fábrica lleva 35 años 
en confecciones, todo lo que es joyo, todo lo que es pelicha, entonces pantalón <coughs> en collo. Bello, qué bello, los colores sí. son lindos, porque tienes azul, tienes amarelo, tienes de todos los colores. Bolsetas, tienes una colección de todos los tipos, más pequeño, más grande. Aquí tienes todo lo que es las cintas, los cinturones, perguomo, perlatona. Already the experience has started. We made our own chimichurri and we're gonna have wine pairing and a lot of meat dishes. Um, it's, it's such a treat, it's such a beautiful way to end our um, time in Buenos Aires. The city has just charmed us so much that we cannot wait to come back. We're making a, a plan to come back already. Tonight we're going to have a reinterpretation of the traditional asado by this restaurant. It's a very intimate experience. We're in the kitchen with the chefs and we're about like not even 10 people. So it's going to be amazing. We hope you enjoy this. This is one of the most uh, traditional piece of meat in Argentina, which is the asado. That is el enemigo chardonnay. So, oh, I said before, we're going to use chardonnay to begin the experience because it's pretty fresh and soft. This is going to be the perfect painting for the aperitifs. In the top you're going to find a pear that was cooked in Torrentes wine reduction. This is called the marriage. And it's called like this because this whole piece is always comes together. <laughs> Maybe the perfect solution will be the hunger killer because it's the first piece of meat that we put to the grill to kill the hunger. This is the eyebrow, the cap of the ribeye. And basically, we cook it like a minute and a half from each side, and that's it. Also, the idea behind this is that you mix it a little bit and it's gonna be done. So, please, taste the first piece of paint alone. The second one with a little of salt, mm -hmm. and the last one with a little of chimichurri. What are you saying? My husband has to buy me the bottle? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. It's not that shit. <laughs> this is dulce de leche pancake with caramel of topping. So, we really hope you like it. Um, Ricardo? Ricardo? Y okay, Manuel. Manuel, okay, okay. Yeah, we just, we, we loved it here. It's like the, the ambiance, the experience, uh, how you take care of all the guests. It's just fantastic. We're so happy. Um, we wanted to know a little bit what is the concept and the idea behind, behind Fogon. Uh, I know the history from the source. Mm -hmm. um, I know that the concept, it, it comes from um, a travel, the, the owner and the general manager. Um, the, Basically, they, I think, was uh, the um, Rugby World Cup okay. in Japan. 
So they traveled to, to Japan okay. and they saw the omakase, the oh, Japanese oh, yeah, omakase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So the first thing that they thought was like, okay, we need to, de to do, do this with a asado. Yeah. Okay. So I, I know that that is the... We have the inspiration in the omakase Japanese, mm -hmm. but we just want to show the travelers that come here to Argentina. Uh, it's one of the most touristic capitals, uh, cities that you're going to find in all the world. Yeah. Uh, how we make our stuff here in Argentina, all the culture that we have with the wine, print selection and all the things that we can show you yes. that uh, makes part of us. Where uh, is the meat from? Uh, the meat we get it from, basically here in Argentina the highest quality of meat it, it comes from the, from the Pampa okay. and that's uh, like uh, the main place to get really, really okay. high quality. And we work with um, a company that um, it, it, uh, a couple of uh, high restaurants work uh, with them too, uh, like uh, La Cabrera, uh, Kansas. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. La Cabrera yeah. is also very nice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Kansas is also very nice too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. One thing I'm very oh. curious about is how is it to cook with fire? Because it's one thing when you have your thermometers and yeah. you know how the oven works, but this is open fire, so... Yeah, yeah, uh, for me it's uh, excellent. Um, uh, basically, I fell in love with work uh, with cooking with wood. Uh, a couple of years ago, I was working in a place called Chui, it's like a vegetarian place, yeah. and they only work with wood in same here. So I think it's uh, I like that I like the fire the the yeah. wildness that yeah. that that yeah. implies. So it's really good. Yeah. Well, we can we can tell you that it's clear that you guys really really love what you do. You take <laughs> yes. care of people so well. You, know, you cook and stuff. So keep doing what you're doing. We really love it. And thank you so much. No, for thank you guys. Thank yeah, you. it was a pleasure. Yeah. 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 Thank Thanks. you very much. I want that one. So this is gonna be a wrap of our show. It's one city that we're very, 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 very sad to leave. We cannot wait to come back again. It's been amazing. It's been fast. I think that you need over a month to really see the city, but it's been it's overwhelming for us. Um, we're definitely going to come back. The food was amazing. The architecture is amazing. The people are amazing, genuine people. So it's been 